We come to oral questions. The question number one is in the name of the Honourable Simon Bridget. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does she stand by all her government's statements and actions? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes. Does she agree with Labor leader Jacinda Ardern's statement that there will be no nationwide strikes under her government? Mr Speaker, uh, that statement was given during a very fine election debate, as I recall, uh, with the then national uh, leader. Uh, uh, that was uh, uh, Dr Bill English. Uh, and I have to say... Um, uh, oh, I have promoted him. Um, Mr. Mr. Order, Speaker. Order, 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 order. I, 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 I know it's the me. Christmas season, but I think if the question can be answered uh, directly, that would be preferable. Well, relatively speaking, he deserved that, uh, that lift in status. I think, Mr Speaker, to answer the question, that was, of course, an answer to fair pay agreements. Uh, I gave the confirmation then, and I give it again now. There will be no strike action around fair pay agreements. <laughs> Isn't it the case that there have been more strikes under her government than at any time since she was a child at primary school? Mr Speaker, if the member is referring to the fact that we are operating under the exact same law uh, in terms of employment law that we did under that government... Order. Order. Now, Grant Robertson is mainly responsible for that. And he is to be quiet. Shall I complete? You know, well, I, I, I could hardly hear a thing because of the, uh, the exchange between Mr Bridgets and Mr Robertson. So I, I'm going to ask the Prime Minister to repeat her answer. Mr Speaker, as I was saying, uh, the exact same law, of course, has continued to be in force during the course of the strike action we have seen whilst being in government. And, Mr Speaker, the only thing that I will take responsibility for is coming into office at a time of dereliction and neglect yeah. under that last government where there has not been investment in our health services, our education services, and we are the ones fixing it. Well, given that, why does she believe Air New Zealand's engineers and ground staff are striking for three days just before Christmas, affecting tens and tens of thousands of Kiwis at this special time of year? Mr Speaker, that kind of action usually occurs when there is a pay uh, uh, and conditions dispute between employers and employees. Obviously, we as government have no direct role in that dispute. However, uh, I am concerned enough by the disruption that would likely be caused that I have contacted both parties directly and conveyed my very strong hope uh, that we will see some resolution, and I understand that they are in mediation as we speak. Isn't the reason for the strike that her government's pro-union stance and union laws have emboldened unions order, in every... Order, order. No, I am going to ask the um, Leader of the Opposition to ask his question again, uh, and there will be some extra questions as a result of the whinging and moaning from my right. Isn't the reason for the strike that her government's pro-union stance and union law have emboldened unions in every single field in New Zealand, including aviation. Mr Speaker, no. Oh, come on, come on. Will the fair pay regime coming in help bring down the level of strikes? Mr Speaker, there is no ability to strike under fair pay agreements. Are there too many strikes in New Zealand today? Mr Speaker, I acknowledge that the uh, strike action that we experienced with the nurses was a negotiation that that government failed to resolve and right. this one did. Are there too many strikes in New Zealand today? Mr Speaker, there has been too much neglect uh, and it is absolutely ludicrous to suggest uh, that uh, us coming into action midway through a failed negotiation with the nurses, uh, with teachers, we have put on the table more in one offer than that last government put 
in nine years in office. We are dealing with years of discontent because of that uh, opposition party's lack of investment in core services. Are there too many strikes in New Zealand today? Uh, Mr Speaker, there has been too much lack of investment and we are fixing it. Is she concerned that the people who made representations on behalf of Carol Schrobrick may have associations with her government? Mr Speaker, no. Um, as I mentioned in the House yesterday and probably repeatedly last week, uh, of course what will be in public interest is whether or not any representations um, were uh, directly involving members of parliament. As I, uh, as I conveyed to this House uh, on many occasions, uh, the uh, minister in charge has confirmed that no MP made any representations directly to him. And I have also mentioned that I knew nothing of this case personally until it was in the paper. How will it look if members of her government are close to those who made representations on behalf of Carol Schrubeck? Look, Mr Speaker, of course what's in the public interest here is if any members of parliament made direct representations uh, or had knowledge of those representations. And the um, minister uh, has ruled out any MP or minister conversing with him directly over this case. Uh, of course that's important because he's the one who made this decision. Spinning on the heat of a pen. When will the opposition get the representations? Will it be in 10 days under the old Official Information Act, or more proactively? Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, obviously an Official Information Act is in. That's the process that the Minister is currently dealing with, and I see that the Member has questions on notice today as well. Is she going to move what appears to be a government-wide Official Information Act dump day from 21 December to Christmas, given everyone may still be here next Friday due to the Air New Zealand strikes? <laughs> Well, oh, well, I will allow it, but if, if the member uh, follows the advice given to me from Mr Brownlee, I would have ruled it out. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I expect ministers to uphold uh, the requirements set upon them by the Official Information Act. Question number two, Kira Allen. Mr Speaker. Uh, my